In this video, I'm going to show you basic tools for designing laser cut files in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to design this laser cut sign with a stand together. So I have the design here, created a mock-up, and then we have our color-coded laser ready file. If you're interested in learning how to add the wood look to your mock-ups, I have another video that I can link for that one as well. So let's get started with setting up our new document and artboard, and then we'll move through the design and I'll show you each of the tools as we design the sign. So when you open Adobe Illustrator, you're going to click new file and that will open your new document and you'll want to name your document, input your size. You can do the size of your laser bed or whatever size works for you. Color mode, RGB color, screen size 72, and then click create. That will open your new artboard here, your 12 by 12. You can edit your artboard by clicking here, different sizes, move it around. You can also add other artboards depending on your workflow. Around your artboard is called your canvas. And I like to have my canvas in white for lots of space to design when I'm working in a file. So you go to edit, preferences, user interface, and you can change what color the background canvas is. Another thing that I like to have on in preferences is general. I use a mouse with a wheel so you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. It makes it really easy to navigate around the screen. So now that we have our artboard set up ready to design, I'm going to start the design and walk you through the tools as we go. So the first tool that we're going to look at is the selection and the direct selection tool. The selection tool allows you to move things around the screen. So if I click on this object here, I can move it around. The direct selection tool, you'll see these anchor points here come up. This tells the laser where to travel from anchor point to anchor point along the path. So we can click on one of these and move them. We can change them by dragging over here, change them if they're going to be a corner or if they're going to be smooth. You can remove them, you can cut them or join them. This is really the foundation of creating a laser cut file is creating the paths that are connected by the anchors for the laser to follow. The next tool that I want to show you is the stroke and fill of an object. So you'll see in our laser ready file here, we have the stroke. I use red for cutting and blue for scoring, and I use green for engraving. I design with my stroke at 0 0.001 inches. Um, I've made it a little bit larger, so it's easier for you to see on the screen for now. So now we're ready to get started with designing our sign. We're going to start by doing the arch shape sign with the tab on the bottom, as well as the stand and the slot. So we are going to start with the rectangle tool over here. If you right click, you can see all the different types of tools that you can use and the shortcuts for them. So we're going to click on the rectangle tool and we just click and drag to make our rectangle. And we can go over here and input the exact size. So I'm going to do a five by seven sign. If we want to adjust the rectangle shape to be an arch, we're going to go to our direct selection tool and we can select these top two anchor points and click and drag to make it into an arch. And then I'm going to grab another rectangle here and click and drag. And I'm going to make this one three inches wide for our tab and then the thickness of my sheet of material. And we can hit the V key to go back to selection again. And then we're going to zoom in so that we can line it up perfectly. And sometimes you have to zoom in a little bit more. So there we have our tab and our sign. We're going to grab another rectangle for our stand. We're going to make this one five inches wide as well and then one and a half inches deep and one more rectangle for this one. We'll just grab the one that we already made, hold down alt and click and drag to make another one. So now they're all of our basic shapes are here, but they're not aligned perfectly. So that's our next tool is the alignment tools. Now alignment tools are going to show up for us when we click on our shape here. You'll see the alignment tools come up here. If you don't see them in any of the tools in your windows here, you can go over here and click on window and find the tools that you need and click on them and they will show up for you. Everything's going to be in alignment. So I'm going to select everything by clicking and dragging and I'm going to align. Everything's perfectly in alignment. If you wanted to not have both objects move, you can select them. And then I want the tab to align to the sign. So if I click on the sign again, it's going to add an extra highlight to select it. And then when I hit align, 
just the bottom tab is going to move. So that's really handy when you just want one piece to align to the other. So everything is in alignment here. Now we need to attach the tab of the sign to the sign so that our laser doesn't cut straight across here and cut it off. So our next tool we'll go to is the Pathfinder tool. So we can bring up our Pathfinder tool over here by selecting the two objects. You can either click and drag or you can click on an object, hold shift and grab the other object by clicking and your Pathfinder tools will come up here. Again, if they're not there, you can go in the window and find your Pathfinder tools in here. So I have both of them selected. My Pathfinder tools show up. There's the basic ones that are showing here. Unite, click to minus the front, click to intersect, and click to exclude. We're going to click to unite and that's going to make them into one piece. So here you can see that now it's just one shape. Our stand here, we're just going to make sure that these are completely centered. There we go, it moved down just a little bit. So here's our basic sign. The tab will go into the slot. The slot here will need to be adjusted for kerf and your exact material thickness. If you're not familiar with adjusting for kerf and material thickness, I will link my kerf toolkit that goes over how to do that as well. So the next tool that we're going to do is the text tool to put the word one on our sign. So we'll go over here, click on text tool, click where we want our text to be. I'm gonna type the word one and hit escape and that will allow me to resize the font. If you want it to scale at the correct size, you can hold shift and drag to increase the size. I've added a glyph in here. So if we wanna add that in, you double click to have the flashing spot here and we'll go to window, type, glyphs, and that'll bring up our glyph panel and we'll double click on the end that we want. And then you can close that and backspace that in. And then I'll hit escape again. So now we have our text here. This isn't going to give the laser a path to follow. It's just text. And if I go to my direct selection tool and click on it, it's not giving me any path or anchor points to follow for the laser. So we need to change that text into something the laser can read. So I'll go back to my selection tool. I'm gonna to click on it, right click, hit create outlines. And then if I zoom in here and go to the direct selection tool, you can see now it has a path around it with the nodes that will tell the laser where to go. Go back to my selection tool and I'm going to make this look just like the rest of it and I can get my stroke to be black and remove the fill. Just like that. And I'm gonna change my stroke to 0 0.001, just like the rest of my design. This is gonna bring us to our next tool, the offset tool. And you'll notice that I have made this one slightly thicker than this one, so we can select all of them. So when you have them all selected, you can click on object, path, offset path, and that's going to allow us to input a number here. And I am going to offset mine of 0 0.03, just to make it slightly thicker. So you can see that a line has been put around all of them and I am going to select everything and I'm going to go to the Pathfinder tool and click Unite so that we only have one line for the laser to cut and not two. And I'm going to ungroup them so that each is still individual. Next, we're going to do our flower. So that will be another shape tool. So we're gonna to go to our shape tool over here and right click. This time we want a polygon shape and we are going to put 10 sides on our polygon. Doesn't matter the radius size right now because we'll move it around as we need. So that is a funny looking flower, but we're going to go to effects, distort and transform, pucker and bloat, and then you can just play with it here what you like for your flower to look like. And you can have the preview checked on. I'm gonna go 65% and hit okay. And that's what our flower is gonna look like. But you can see on the direct selection tool here, it is still a polygon shape, it's not the floral shape. So that is going to bring us to our next tool. So in order to have the anchor points in the path tell the laser where to go on this shape we've created, we need to expand it. So we're gonna to go to object and expand appearance. And just like that, we have the anchor points in the path for the laser to follow. So I'm going to click my selection tool and then I can move the flower over. And I'm actually going to hit selection and click on the O 
and then hit the O again so that I can align my flower with the O so it's in perfect placement. So at this point I can get rid of the O. I'm going to move my flower over just a little bit because it's almost touching the end there. So then I'm going to select them all and I'm going to, you can either right click or hit control G to group them together and then I'm going to align all of them to my sign. So they're in the center. Um, we're going to use the shape tool again, this time for a circle, and we're going to make the inside of our flower. So we can make a circle. If you want it to be a perfectly round circle, hold the shift tool and that will keep the perfect size. So then we can click on V to move it right to the center. If we want to align it perfectly, again, we can, so we, uh, we will ungroup all of this. So ungroup and to align it to the center, we'll click on both, click on the flower again, and then we can align it to the center of the flower. So that will bring us to our next tool to be able to have this as two different pieces, to have our flower a different color as the center, we're going to pick up both shapes. So I've clicked on both and to duplicate them, I'm going to hold Alt and then click and drag so we have another flower over here. So this is gonna be our cut piece here. So I'm going to, again, click and drag that over there. So we have that piece that's gonna cut out in our yellow center, and then this one will cut out as our white flower. We can see that this still moves around, but we don't want that to move on us. We want it to be all one shape. So I'm gonna select both of them and go to our Pathfinder tool and click minus the front. So you will see now that that is all one shape. Then we have two of our cut pieces here ready to go. And now we need to grab the N and the E and I'm gonna hold Alt to duplicate them. And that gives us our other cut pieces. So like this one up here that's already laser ready, I'm now going to apply the colors. So I'm gonna select everything in red. So we're going to change our stroke to red. So that's going to tell the laser to cut those out. And then I want to create this scoring spot here to be able to take our pieces and just put them over top on a scored line so we know exactly where to put them. So that brings us to our next tool of the offset tool. So to offset with the score line, I'm going to select all of our pieces here and I'm going to go to object, path, offset path and this time I'm going to do a negative offset and I'm going to do 0 0.02 so we can see that now we have an inside line and click OK and while we have all of those selected I'm going to click Control G to group them together and then I can really easily grab the outside ones and delete those ones and then these ones here one more on the flower I'm going to ungroup them again and I can actually delete the center of the flower because we'll know where to put it. I'll select all of these, change the stroke to blue, and now we have our laser ready file. So we have our cut pieces to go on top of our sign, the score lines to tell us where to put them, and our basic arch sign with our stand. So this is ready to go to the laser now. So that brings us to our final tool and I'm going to show you how to save it to an SVG file. So we can go over here and click on file, save as, and it'll give you the option to save it on your computer or the cloud. So we have our file name in here or you can change it and we're going to save it as an SVG file. Click save SVG 1.0. We want at least three decimal places and then make sure responsive is unchecked and you can click OK. So there we have a laser ready file, a basic sign with a stand with some text and a design on top. If you want to practice with this exact file, I'm going to put a link below so that you can download this laser ready file and practice on your screen making the exact copy. I hope this tutorial has been helpful for you in learning the basics of Adobe Illustrator. 